everyone and welcome. This is Melissa Armo with the Stock Swoosh and I'm reviewing the Stock Swoosh Show Live Trading Room Advanced Trader Tracking through January, start of the year, until we're into the middle of August, a little bit past that. So we have about four and a half months left in the year. We'll see where we go by the end of the year. I'm looking forward to a very, very volatile fall period for many reasons. One, we have earnings in the fall. Two, we have so many, uh, you know, overseas things going on right now, news conflicts that are affecting the market. So that creates volatility in stocks in the market, and that allows people opportunity to profit if you know the direction to trade it. And again, I go long and I go short, but many of these trades that we're going to go over here actually were shorts because I prefer to short. Why? Because stock, stocks fall quickly, okay? Panic comes in very, very fast. And so I prefer to short um, in my day trades. So this is the day trade tracking, okay? Not the options, but just the live trading room, which is focused on day trading. The options is a separate newsletter. If you want to sign up for that, this is a trading room. And in order to join the live trading room, you have to be a Golden Gap course student. We'll go over that more at the end. Anyways, results here today is 358,551. And we'll go over all the trades. This is me. I think everyone's seen me by now. I've been on TV enough. Uh, for several years, but if you have questions, you can email me at melissa at thestockswoosh.com. You can also call me at 929-3200-GAP, and you can follow me on Twitter, Facebook, YouTube, or Skype. So earnings season is a great time to trade. It is a fabulous time to trade. The class, the next class I'm doing is at the end of August, and then boom, earnings season starts in September. We're at the tail end of earnings season now. We've got, we've got a couple of earnings this week. I do gaps really for earnings, for news, for whatever reason you happen to get a gap, but you get the more gaps during earnings season, which is again why fall is a busy trading period. So going back to the beginning of the year, started out the year, <coughs> God, January seems so long ago now. I can't even believe we're still talking about COVID, like seriously. I thought this was over at the beginning of the year. January was Boeing, winner, spy was a loser. Six was Facebook, twice lost, BYND was a winner, and Apple was a winner. Sometimes I'll do a retake. That's what I did on Facebook, it didn't work out. Now, most days I will only do one ticker symbol. If I do something like the BA and it wins, then I'm done. It's rare that I would do two things at the same time. Could happen. BYND was a retake, first trade lost, second trade worked. <coughs> so that was good. I have to have conviction in order to do a retake, though, I will tell you that, because you never know. Then on the 8th, BA, winner, CCL, winner two. Then on the 11th, Twitter lost, Facebook lost, BA lost, Twitter lost, Facebook lost, BA break even, Facebook won, and Apple was a winner. That was a very active day. The more trades I find that I do on one particular day for the day trades, the worst, harder day I'm having. The best days I have is one thing or two things like on the 8th, for example. Netflix was a winner, and CCL winner on the 12th. BA was a winner on the 13th, Twitter was a winner on the 14th. WFC, again, this is the beginning of the year, earning season, it was Wells Fargo, winner. 15th, close on the 18th, Twitter was a winner. Netflix loser, Netflix winner. UAL was a winner too on the 21st. IBM was a winner, beautiful gap, remember that. Uh, Apple was a winner on the 25th. Remember, most of these trades are short. Some are longs, but most are shorts. Verizon was a small winner. 27th was BA was a winner. SPY was a big winner. No trades on the 28th. SPY lost, Facebook won. No trades on February 1st. <laughs> now, while it's rare that I would not do any trades, it can happen. If I don't like anything, I'm not going to do it. Okay, so I get up in the morning and I rate the gap. If I find gaps that rate per my 26 point rating system, I will take them in the direction of the gap. If I don't, I won't do any trades. Okay, you can't force something to work if it doesn't want to go. February 2nd, UPS lost, buy one. Q's two shots at that, one loser, one winner. QCOM worked in the fourth. Spy was a loser, then break even. QCOM lost, then break even. That was a tough day, that was in the fifth. Go back and look at the market that day. Diamonds won on the 8th. IBM lost. Apple lost on the 9th. 10th was ACAM loser, Twitter loser, and Twitter a big winner. Remember that gap. 
Then February 11th, Spy Loss Save, big winner. Disney was a loser on the 12th. IBM was a loser. Twitter, big winner. Closed on the 15th. Twitter was a nice winner on the 16th. No trades on the 17th. WMT won. Twitter won. BA lost. WMT won. No trades on the 23rd. Spy lost then was a big winner. That required a retake on the 24th. Twitter lost. Disney won. 25th was BBY lost. Twitter two losers and DPZ a winner. Footlocker has always been good to us. Winner. Spy winner on March 1st. DDD was a winner. Ross was a winner. Four spy lost, then one. GPS lost. Facebook lost. And GPS lost on the 5th. This is March. Facebook lost. Apple won on the 8th of March. Stitch Fix was a good one on March 9th. Spy lost. Stitch Fix won on the 10th. Again, that was a follow through of the stitch fix which was earnings beginning of the year <coughs> oracle march 11th won then on march 12th lily won spy won no trades at the 17th apple was a winner on the 18th nike was a winner on the 19th that was earnings 22nd no trades wells fargo two shots losers apple lost ba huge winner on the 23rd GIS won, Q's lost, Netflix won, Apple won on the 24th. Busy day. Spy lost and then won on the 25th. Again, a retake that worked. Facebook lost, Apple won on the 26th. 29th was JPM, that was a winner. Boy, those banks have been all over the place so recently, haven't they? Jeez, just thinking about those banks. March 30th, Apple won, Lulu won on the 31st. Off for the Easter holiday, no trades on the 12th. Fash was a loser, Apple winner and Spy winner on the 13th of April. BBBY was break even on the 14th. C lost, Apple won on the 15th. Uh, the 16th was MS was a loser and BA was a winner. 19th, no trades. IBM won on the 20th of April. Netflix lost, first trade, second trade won, but not as big as the first. LDS lost, Netflix won. This is a 22nd, INTC winner. No trades on the 26th, UPS, big winner on the April 27th. I remember that gap, beautiful gap. We did an option in that too. 28th, save loss, Starbucks won, Microsoft won on the 28th. eBay won on the 29th. Then we had that Twitter, Twitter lost then won. It was a good one, but it took a while to go. Twitter then won again on May 3rd. Microsoft was a big one on the 4th. No trades on the 5th. Spy lost, Uber lost, Netflix lost, and Etsy won on the 6th. At Etsy. Have to go back and look at that. May 7th, BYND, which we love, but unfortunately did not work that day whatsoever at all. Well, it did later. I shouldn't say that, but it didn't work right out of the gate, which I want to see. And I did it three times, and that was really crazy. And then it finally went. That was rough. Shaq was a big winner, though, that day. Huge winner, too. I have to look at that one. May 10th, Q's won. Then on the 11th, Q's, Microsoft, Apple, BA Spy, all lost, and BA was break even, then a winner in the spy. It was a tough day for the market. Microsoft lost, then the second one, a huge winner on the 12th. Spy was a really big winner, then it finally went on the 12th. Baba was a loser, twice, Target, big winner on the 13th. Target's been flying this year. Flying! It's just Ridiculous how some of these retailers have been. Disney was a winner on the 14th. Microsoft was a winner on the 17th. 18th was T. That was a winner. 19th, Spy loss. Q's loss. A was a winner in Spy break even. Second trade. 20th was Cisco loss. KSS, big winner. That KSS is tomorrow. No trades on the 21st. BYND was a winner. Love BYND. 25th was Apple loss. Shaq lost. Another loss in Shaq. And then DY worked for a big one on the 15 minute. 26 was JWM was a winner. Love Nordstrom. DLTR was a winner on the 27th, and HPQ was a winner on the 28th. This is going into the Memorial Day holiday. Spy lost June 1st. Amber lost. Apple won June 2nd, then off for that week of June. Then Stitch Fix lost twice. Q's lost. Apple won, and Stitch Fix finally worked. Then Campbell Soup, which was on the 9th, lost twice. Q's lost. Spy lost, Q's won, Microsoft won on the 10th, CCL lost, Microsoft lost, 
Then two winners in Italy. That was a good one on the 11th. Apple won on the 14th. No trades of 15th. Oracle, nice winner on the 16th. No trades on the 17th. Then had the banks on the 18th. JPM won, SPY won. No trades on the 21st. Apple lost first trade. Big one on the second one. Gotta sometimes stick with something. QQQs won on the 23rd. KBH on the 24th was a just in and out. Those are the best. Those are the best ones. The fast, big ones. I love. Wish every day was like that, actually. Fast and big. 625 was FDX1. Spy loss and the Q's one on the 28th. No trades the 29th. This is getting to the July 4th holiday. Apple worked. Winner. STZ was break even. Mu was a winner. Apple was a winner in the second. Then off for the holiday. BA1. BAC1. No trades in the 15th. Q's lost. Netflix won. Diamonds won on the 19th. No trades in the 20th. Netflix was a nice winner on the 21st. LVS won. 22nd, INTC won on the 23rd, LVS won on the 26th, UPS won on the 27th, Microsoft won loser, Cake was a winner, PayPal, small winner on the 29th, and then a nicer winner on the 30th. July was a really good month, people. Really nice month. Then August 2nd, new trades. T2 won on the 3rd, CVS lost, CCL lost, Spy won on the 4th, Etsy lost, and CVS big winner on the 5th. Did an ad in that talk about that more in the advanced class. EXP, beautiful, beautiful gap on the 6th. BA1 and no trades on the 10th. WW1 on the 11th, Baidu on the 12th. Disney lost, Baidu won, CCL lost on the 13th. Baidu won in the Qs, one on the 16th, and BA on the 17th. So, so far, we're getting into the last two weeks of August. We'll see where we go. Average or trader advanced risk, which you do not have to risk. If you're a beginner, you can risk $150. You can risk $1,000. You can risk whatever it size to the recording of your account. If you have questions, you can ask me, you can call me. It has to do with the type of account you have versus retail versus prop and your actual cash balance. And it also has to do with your knowledge. If you're new and you just did the class right out of the gate, I say go slow, go slow. I mean, you have all the time in the world to make money. I mean, that's what I really tell people. So take your time. That's the best Best thing I can tell you is take your time, please, okay? Even if you have $500,000 of trade, take your time until you get used to it. Some of these trades are a little bit more than 2,500, some are a little bit less when you're taking trades quick and fast. Again, I call the trades live in the room. You, you do the best you can. This is not an exact science. But, you know, just going back here and looking at where we've been, the move to the market, the drop off we've had, the rally since the beginning of the year, this is an overall picture here going out until mid-May. And I will say that, I mean, not 100%, but there is a possibility with all the conflict that's going on right now in the world that um, we're going to see some selling. And how fast the selling goes, how quick the selling goes, how deep the selling goes, how, how far the selling goes, I do not know. Could be one day, could be two days, could be longer. Okay. We've seen some volatility already this week where we have selling and then it reverses. Now, getting back to what I was saying, do you have to risk $2,500 a trade? No, you can risk a beginner risk. If you have questions, you can ask me. I even think it's important for people to start out if you've never traded before to trade in a demo. Don't trade with live money if you've never traded before. You have to get used to pressing the buttons, okay? And all of this is after the class, after you take the Golden Gap course, okay? And that's the class where I teach my system and my strategy is a class I teach once a month. It's the meat and potatoes really of what we do. So I'm just gonna go over briefly here what I'm talking about in reference to buying power. Say the stock is $40 a strike, uh, $40 per share. Say you take 200 shares. What do you need? $8,000 in buying power. You can take that with a $2,500 prop account at 10 to one margin, all right? You're gonna need 25,000 to go retail, which is four to one margin anyway, so you'd have enough. But the whole point is that you don't have to risk thousands of dollars in per trade. So if you risk $200 a day, you can make $1,000 a week. You don't have to take this, this type of risk I'm reviewing here. This is an advanced trader risk. Remember, I started trading in 2008. And I, and I will tell you that I started out with $150 risk. And then I worked it up from there over time. That's the best thing that you can do. You want to learn it. You want to do well. You want to get used to it. You want to get acclimated to it. It's not about just hammering it, hammering it. We all want to make money, that's true, but you want the curve to go up, 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 up. 
You don't want to be so scared taking too much risk in a trade that you make a mistake or a fat finger, okay? You can day trade with a beginner account and risk the only difference is your share size is smaller. As I was discussing, you can grow a small account into a larger account, all right? You've got to be careful. You've got to learn it, and that's, that's my two cents. Now, as far as trading, we all want to have financial freedom. Obviously, we all want to make money. That's the purpose of doing this. But we also want to have fun and enjoy ourselves and enjoy our lives. And we want to reduce stress. Today's environment in 2020 and 2021, people are under an enormous amount of stress for a multitude of reasons. But if you can work from home and earn a living or even just make extra money on the side on top of your regular job, it will help reduce your stress by having more money coming in. So take your time, learn it, learn what to do. The class is called the Golden Gap Course. The class is August 28th and 29th. The class tuition is $6,999. Everyone pays the same price. Don't ask me for discounts. No one gets them. Everyone who's ever done the class since the price has been $6,999 has paid this, okay? The class is online. You could be anywhere in the world and take it. If you need to pay on a few different cards at the same date, at the same time, I will allow that, okay? You can split it up, but you have to pay the same day. I will allow that too. Again, I'm here to help you. I'm here to help you learn. That's the purpose of this. Again, class is online. If you have questions or want to sign up, email me at melissathestockswish.com. You can go to the website at www.thestockswish.com if you have questions too. Feel free to call me at 929 gap as well. I hope everyone has a wonderful, wonderful, wonderful rest of the week. Be careful if you're trading. And if you have questions and want to learn my method, reach out. Thanks, everyone. Have a great day.